vector can be very beautiful. With its almost endless array of patterns, perfectly organized structures, it would be very difficult to do this with just pen and paper. Most of my lessons work through projects that are practical, client-based projects. The next few lessons will focus on something more fun and enjoyable, creating digital vector art. We're going to be creating some stunning geometric shapes, forms, and radial objects in Adobe Illustrator by just using a few basic tools. We will also be using the new repeat tool to accomplish these complex shapes, even easier than it was before. So let's hop into Adobe Illustrator and we'll find out just how easy and fun this process can be. I've spent several hours enjoying these tools and creating such a wide variety of shapes. I want to teach you the ones that I felt like gave the neatest result. And we're going to first start with the blend tool. So we're going to go ahead and open up a new document. So we're going to go file, new. It could be any size. We could do uh, pixels. We could do uh, inches. Let's just stick with pixels. And let's just do 3000 by 3000. We can always change this at another time. We can keep RGB color mode and do create. So the blend tool is super powerful. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the basics. So let's say I have a circle. I'm just going to get the ellipse tool. Hold down shift. I'm going to create a perfect circle and I'm going to go ahead and make it a specific stroke. So I'm just in my properties panel and I'm just going to increase the stroke. And right now it has a fill on. So I'm just going to take the fill off and just have a simple stroke. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to hold down option and bring it over here. So what the blend tool does, it'll take two separate points and put specific points that change from one state to another. So I'm going to select both of these objects and this is how you find the blend tool. You'll go up to object, go down to blend. It's got its very own menu and we're going to go down to blend options first. We need to tell blend exactly what we want it to do. And there's lots of different ways you can do different things. So let's go to blend options and we're going to do specific steps. So we're going to do specific steps and we're going to tell Adobe Illustrator how many steps we want to put in between one object and another. And let's say eight for now. So we're going to just stay with eight, keep the orientation the same and click on OK. So now we need to actually apply the blend. So let's go to object, back down to blend, and there is a keyboard shortcut if you don't want to have to go through all this over and over, but click on make. And it's going to put eight different circles in between one and the other. What's really neat about this is it can actually morph shapes. So let's say I have an ellipse tool and I'm going to have the circle. And let's say I also have a square. I'm going to select both of these objects, go up to object, blend. I'm going to make, I already have my blend options set to eight and I'm going to click on make. It's going to put eight different shapes between the two, but it's going to slowly morph and transform them to go from the circle all the way to the square. And what's really neat is let's try this again with the ellipse tool. Let's make it bigger. Let's just make sure it's on a stroke. It's thick enough. Let's create another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, copy, and I'm going to paste in place and it's going to paste a copy right on top. So I know that there's two ellipses now or two circles. So I'm going to take one of those circles and I'm going to do something a little bit different that I haven't done before. We've held down shift and we've dragged it down or drug it down to make it smaller. But what if I want to drag it down instead of going to one corner or another corner, I want it to scale perfectly in the center and make it smaller. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down option and I'll show the windows keyboard shortcut for this too. Holding down option and hold down option, but I'm also going to hold down shift because I want it to scale dimensionally. So I'm holding down option and shift at the same time and I'm reducing in its size and now it collapses or it scales down to the center point. So that's really great if you just want to make a quick copy. So let's say I want to copy this object and I want to paste it in place. So I just created a copy right on top of it. I can hold down option and shift and scale and I can continue to scale in the center. So that's a really neat trick that you can use often. 
So now I have three of these ellipses. Let's make them all the same stroke width. So I'm just over here in my stroke panel. And let's just make them 13 for now or whatever size that you're in. I'm going to select all of them. So I'm just going to click and drag with my move tool, select all of them, go up to object, blend, and I'm going to go to make. And so what it's going to do is it's going to make eight different steps between each one of the circles. And let's kind of go back. I'm going to do command Z, which is my shortcut to go back in my history. And I'm going to change the colors on these so you can see exactly what's happening. So let's make that blue. Let's make this one red and let's make this one green. So now you can really see what's happening. I'm going to select all of them, go up to object, blend and make. So we created eight copies from this outer circle to this inner circle of red. Then it made in another eight copies between the middle circle and the inside circle. So in total, it made 16 different steps. And you can change this by going up to object, blend, blend options. And when you go down to specific steps, you can increase this quite a bit. So you can put 22. So now there could be 22 different steps between each object. Click OK, and then I can go to make. And you can see how the more you have, the more complex it gets. And now we can reduce our stroke size on all of these. So let's reduce the stroke size. And now you have something really interesting. And a lot of times with this, especially when I'm dealing with color and shapes, I like to put it on a nice high contrast background. So I'm just going to create a new layer in my layers panel, and I'm just going to create a black background. And I'm just going to bring this down below on the bottom, and I'm just going to lock it. So now I just have this nice back background I can kind of see some of these colors with. So now I can bring this in the middle. And what's really interesting here, so we have an outer ellipse, an inner ellipse, and a center ellipse. But what we can do now is we can select everything and we can even get the curvature tool and we can create these smooth points. So let's say I'm in the middle here. So I can click, here's my four different points that I can manipulate for the center circle. And I'm just gonna bend it in. And you can see the whole thing adapts and bends. And so this is where you can really get creative. So I'm gonna create a new point over here with the curvature tool and bend it down and continue to create new points to manipulate all of the rings behind it. And it's gonna automatically blend it for you as you change this. And you have this outer ring since we created a couple different rings. So now you can affect this one as well. So just going around and creating new points. And this can be whatever shape you want to create. And we even have the inner circle we can also manipulate. So you can repeat this over and over. You can have over 10 different ellipses, make this super large. You can really make some really interesting complex shapes out of this. This is just the very basics of the blend tool and using the steps, the specific steps part portion of the blend tool.